Hello, who artists? My name is Shonda, and welcome to my channel, Under the Needle Quilting and Crafts. Um, so it's Thursday, so it's Thankful Thursday, and today I am thankful that my Step Into Spring box came. Um, I could not wait to open it. I have not looked inside. I just didn't know if there was an outer box and an inner box or not. Like, when we get our open gate, you know, there's not a box inside a box. Just like the So Sampler, there's not a box inside a box. So I should have known there wasn't going to be a box inside of this box, but I wasn't sure. So I um, immediately got the scissor and went to open it. And in my excitement, I uh, cut myself uh, on my thumb there. Nice, right? Nice, nice. Um, <laughs> so I cut myself in my haste. Um, but I'm excited. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for this box. I've been, I was hoping it would come earlier than what it did. Um, because I used to have, um, like UPS premium or something like that, where they would like automatically upgrade my packages. Cause you know how, what they do is like you, like a, a package will go UPS to your local mail station and then your local carrier will do the delivery. But I used to get UPS premium to where they would cut that out. They would cut out the post office. And so I would get my packages one or two days early. But that's just a ridiculous thing to pay for. So I don't pay for that anymore. <laughs> Actually, I think it used to be free. I don't think you had to pay. But then eventually, of course, you had to start paying for it. But I'm not going to pay for it. Um, I am wearing my Happy Mother's Day shirt today. It's not quite Mother's Day yet, but it's almost Mother's Day. Um, there's nothing on the back. Yeah, yeah, there is stuff on the back. Um, is there a year? I'm trying to remember. So my kids made this for me. So that's my oldest daughter, Jordan. I love you. What's on you? Anyway. Number one, what's that say? Number one mom. So I think it was like for Mother's Day, I don't know if it was 2012, 2013, 2014. It probably it had, it probably, it had to have been 2013, 2014, or 2015, I believe. Because based based on where we were living, it had to be one of those years. So that's how long I've had this shirt. I don't wear it a lot because I don't want anything to happen to it. Like it's still got, you know, um, the little the little glitter dots, the little glitter dots. And it's still, you know, everything is still there. So I don't want anything to happen to it. So I don't wear this a lot. But I decided to put it on today because it's Thursday and I'm thankful. Um, so um, this is really going to be an unboxing. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not lying when I say that the thing that I'm thankful for today is that this box came <laughs> because, um, yeah, because I'd be lying if I if I said that that's not what I'm thankful for today. I have been waiting, waiting, waiting. All right. So let's see what we got. So, OK, this is the step into spring box. So. um Every month I get the Open Gate Quilt subscription box. And so this box is like a specialty box that was curated by that same um, individual, Monique jo Jacobs, over at Open Gate Quilts. Um, I do the Christmas box. So up until now, um, she had the monthly subscription and then she had the Christmas box. And she's uh, started to add other types of things, other offerings. And one of the offerings that she did was step into spring. I don't remember anything about what this box is supposed to be. <laughs> I don't remember anything about what this box is supposed to be. Um, it's the second I saw it, I, I couldn't get my grubby hands on it fast enough. I could not click add to cart fast enough. I believe I added the backing kit as well because there was um, an add-on where you could add on the backing. Pretty sure I added that on. Um, I could not give away my money fast enough when I saw this offering. And because I bought it so quickly, I don't remember what's supposed to be in here. <laughs> but this is Monique we're talking about, so I know it's project-based, and I'm assuming that it's spring-ish, <laughs> right? <laughs> so let's see, let's see, let's see. This is what it looked like. So we have some tissue paper I'll be keeping that because you know that's gonna go in Mother's Day is around the corner and so is my mom's birthday and my 
two aunts' birthdays are around the corner. My mother is April 21st. My aunt Dot is April 28th. And my aunt Sandra is May 1st. And then, of course, we have Mother's Day. So that tissue paper will come in handy. <laughs> oh, look at this. Okay. All right. So we, we have our sheet here that tells us what we're getting. Okay. It says, thank you for purchasing the Step Into Spring Box 2024. It has been so much fun gathering and designing items that remind me of spring and can also last through summer. The first project is... Let me see if I can pull out the project. Oh, my God. Uh, oh my god. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. So the first project is the Daisy Pin Cushion. When I saw the gorgeous circular boxes, I immediately thought that I would love to make this into a pin cushion with my love of wool applique. This gave me a chance to do some designing and creating to make this pretty pin cushion. All wool needed as well as glue. Of course, we're going to, we get the glue too. Um, Vildani pearl cotton, wooden disc, needle, stuffing, and a beautiful wooden box are included. Not to mention this bag that it comes in. Okay. This is crazy. <laughs> Okay, so this is the box. This is the wooden box. Right? And then we have everything we need to make this a pin cushion. We have stuffing. We have this um, wooden disc. The needle, everything else that she was talking about there. <laughs> we got pins. Because <laughs> why get, why... I mean, if she's going to have you make you a pin cushion, then she's going to give you some pins too, right? We've got the pearl cotton, the glue, and the thread. And the bag. This is so cute. <laughs> this is so stinking cute. I bet you Monique has a lovely home. Like no one ever, no one would ever come into my house and be like, oh my gosh, you have such a lovely home. Nobody would say that. Like you might say, oh, that's a nice couch, or I like what you did with that there, or I like that picture, but no one would ever say I have a lovely home. But I feel like Monique has a lovely home. Like I feel like that's what you would say when you walk in. You'd be like, oh my God, you have such a lovely home. Because I, I couldn't do this. <laughs> okay. The second project is a quilt called Dancing Daisies, measuring either a 45 inch or 50 inch square, perfect for either a wall hanging or table topper. The simply pieced center mimics a field of flowers surrounded by a printed floral border. You can choose to make it the larger version or the smaller version, depending on how large you would like it. Wrapping and binding are included. This is insane. That's the backing. I love this print a lot. I love this print a lot. And like, I love the little bees in this yellow print. This is incredible. And look at, oh my God. Look at, okay, 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 okay. All right, so this is the 45 or 50 inch quilt. <laughs> so we've got our, our pin cushion <laughs> project. We've got our 45 or 50 inch quilt project. I love this thing. Okay, um, let me see if I can show you guys a picture. 
because our patterns look our patterns are all like in a book this is such a nice touch okay i can only show you the front because then you would see the pictures i mean the the patterns and i don't want that so that's um that's our pin cushion <laughs> that's our quilt uh table topping or a wall um hanging depending on what which which you prefer and then our last project is coming up because we're not done we're not done i'll be making these I'll be making me. I'll be making me. I want me to stop putting stuff in that I want to make because I'm still, I'm still, I'm still working on my other stuff. Like, um, so I'm still working on my Fourth of July uh, table runner. So I've got this block completed, and I've got three more blocks almost completed. I just have to sew. The last uh, little bit together this is the other block looks like and um, then I just got to sew the blocks together and then figure out if I want to do um, some type of um, border or not or if I want a sash between them um, I haven't decided so I need to once the blocks are done I'm gonna put them together and like just set them together and just figure out if I want a sash between them or not um, or if I want to do a border, if I want to do both, I'm not sure. So um, I'm still working on that table runner. <laughs> and I haven't gotten to quilt the other project yet. And I still have to complete. Um, anyway, I've got so many projects to do. And Monique keeps giving me more stuff to work on. Okay, so last but not least are these placemats. And so Monique says... Um, the third project is the Step Into Spring placemats. Created using quarter square triangles and a beautiful print, you will want to use these placemats all spring and summer long. Backing and binding are included. I'm so glad I got the backing. I'm so glad. Okay. This 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 is this is the money shot right here. Um I don't know who this is, but it looks like Bliss. Northcott, Melanie Samra, I don't know what I'm saying. That's what this looks like. Okay. Extras in the box are or or fill thread, 50 weight and off white. And I showed you guys the thread because that was in here. That little or fill rat Fusible webbing for wool project. And that's that's that little white square right there. And miter corners for wool project and miter corners. Uh, Kimberbell pins. These little cute things. And full color instructions in a convenient booklet form. So this is our... This is our fusible. I guess this is the fusible. This, this is the fusible. I guess. I'm so excited. I am so excited. Um, I believe Adrian works on uh, Saturday. Or is it Sunday? I think he has to work this weekend. Um, I can't wait. Okay. So let me just, let me just, okay. And this is, this is the placemats. You can kind of see them there on the table. I love how they did this. I love the staging. Um, and how they put this together. I think it's such a nice touch. She could have easily did this the way she does her normal subscription boxes. And I think that it was just a bit special, you know, to, to do it in this way. Um, I'm going to show you guys a close-up of these pictures. Hold on. So... There's our pin cushion. There's our placemats. And that's our wall hanging. 
And then staged it all together in a pattern booklet. I am so oh I am so over the moon about this right now. I am so I am so over the moon about this. Um I know I can't do everything. I know like there are other offerings that she's had that I have not been able to do, but I am really glad that I I have no regrets. I did the Christmas box two years in a row, zero regrets. And this is my first step into spring box. It's the first time she's offered this, and I have zero regrets. So to recap, you have everything you need to make this pin cushion. And it's it's adorable. And it's storage. Like the pin cushion, like that goes on top. And then you still have this whole little container here for you to put stuff in. Like I can actually put my pins in here. Like if I if I wanted to like keep them in there instead of having like 50,000 pin cushions. <laughs> or having like pins and boxes over there. I've got like two boxes of pins over there. And these are just, this is just cute. Like this is, I wouldn't actually use this as a pin cushion. This would be just a decoration for me. So I wouldn't put like, for me personally, I wouldn't put my actual pins in the pin cushion. I would just put these cute little decorative pins. But this is getting made. This is, this is getting made. 100%. This is, this is going on the short list. This is getting made. This is adorable. It's not going to go on my table, but it's going to go in my quilt area as a decoration. It's, I think this is adorable. So we have that. We've got our fusible. Okay. We've got our pattern booklet. We have our note from Monique telling us everything that's in the box and what inspired her. So stinking cute. Everything you need. And then we have also the Dancing Daisy wall hanging or quilt or table topper. You can make it 45 inches or 50 inches. Love this print. I would just want this part. <laughs> Let me just let me just take this print and some backing and batting and just make it that. I can hear my kid. Hold on. Anywho, I thought I would get this video done before he got home, but I I was not expecting his box to be this good. I didn't know I'd still be here. Um, okay, so yeah, what I was saying, love this print. I could just just use this. And layer it with um, a backing and a batting and just quilt this this print. I really, 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 really like this print. A lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And then my second favorite project, because actually my favorite project is, is this. This is my favorite project. It's so cute. I would never think of something like this. I just would never think of this. I, I, I would never think of this, ever. <clears throat> and then we have our placemats. The spring has sprung. We have a set of four placemats. I love this. I love these. And I'm guessing that this is the backing, right? Which means that like your placemats become reversible, right? Because then you have your pieced side. You have your pieced side. <laughs> and then you have this as your backing. And so both sides are pretty. Your backing is going to be just as pretty as your pieced side. Anywho. Okay. So that is the spring into spring. Step into spring box. I'm sorry. Love every part of it. Love every part of it. Love the presentation. Love all of it. All of it. Um, I'm really happy with that. Um, what have I been up to? So I showed you guys the blocks. I plan on getting those done. Um, probably today. <laughs> probably I'll probably um, 
at least get the blocks done and then figure out what I'm going to do. If I'm just going to sew the four blocks together and call it a day, because I'm probably going to take it and put it up on the table is what I'm going to do and see how it fits. And then that's how I'm going to determine what I want to do. Um, I think the blocks are pretty heavy. I probably should have done um, like just a continuous background. I, sh I probably should have done I probably because they're, you know, the, the, all the prints together are a little bit busy. And so I want to I'm thinking that that's what that's really the reason why I'm thinking about adding the sashing and the border is to really just to calm the blocks down. Because once I put them together, they were like, I was like, wow, these are kind of loud. <laughs> they're really they're they're loud, but it's OK. I'm going to calm them down. Um. And I did finish making my blocks for the quilt that I started for the retreat. So now all of my blocks are finished for both quilts for the retreat. Um, so I do still need to lay those out and figure out how, um, you know, figure out my layout for both and then pin them in the order that I want to lay them out in. And then that way I can sew the blocks into rows and the rows into a quilt top. Um, I also was doing some more blocks for the table topper that we started for retreat. Um, <clears throat> except I'm not doing a table topper. I was going to do um, take these and make them into placemats um, because I already have a table topper made from the same batiks, from these same batiks. Um, but I used a different fabric. I don't have this fabric is in it, but all the batiks are. So I have a table topper, and so I thought it would be nice to make some placemats um, to match the table topper. So um, I did get some more of these sewn together. They still are not trimmed up, and I still have, this is 16, and then I still have 24 more of these blocks to make and also square up and then figure out, um, yeah. <laughs> but I've just kind of been all over the place. Um, so I've done a lot, but I've spread it around. So like I finished those blocks. I worked on the 4th of July blocks. I um, worked on my cardigan. I've still been working on that. I started a whole new crochet project um, because y'all know I had been working on these granny squares and I realized that I don't, I don't, I don't like them. It's not that I don't like them, but I was looking for something a little bit more mindless. Um, that's why I picked the granny. I picked these, be not mindless, but well, I wanted something that was portable and mindless. And for some people, a granny square might be mindless, but for me, they are not. Um, because I'm not used to, so um, I'm not used to crocheting them, but also I'm not used to, um, like I wanted something I can just pick up anytime. Right. So like if I had been making granny squares my whole life, then maybe I can just pick up and just start making a granny square. Like some people, they don't need a pattern. This is just this is the way I make my granny squares and they just pick it up and they start making it. That's not me. That's not where I'm at. Um, so anytime I want to make one of these, I'm, I have to constantly check the pattern every time. And then I make mistakes and I have to do excessive counting. Um, and it and then trying to keep my attention the same for each square so that they can be sewn together. I wasn't enjoying it. Um, and so I haven't picked it up. Um, so I decided to start something else. Um, the folks over at Furls um, combined with Mixed Domestic. He used to be Mr. Domestic. They used to be Mr. Domestic, but now goes by Mixed Domestic. And I guess he was having some, some difficulties in his life. And so he started crocheting this blanket and he did the larks. This is, this is him tell, this is his story. I'm just saying what he said. Um, that he was so uh, crocheting this lark's foot stitch blanket. And um, one of his followers noticed that it looked like, you know, the blanket was giving you the middle finger. And so he called it his middle finger blanket. And um, I watched the stitch. I watched it. And it is a pretty mindless stitch. Um, once, once my brain understood. 
once my brain understood it, um, I don't need a pattern to do this. I can just pick this up and just start crocheting it. Um, and so instead of doing, instead of using these yarns here, instead of using these to make these granny squares, I am instead going to use it to make this Lark's foot stitch blanket. Um, I wanted to figure out how I wanted, I probably could have made it a little bit wider. Um, but this is fine. And that's why they call it, you know, if you're not familiar with the, with crochet or familiar with the stitch, it does kind of look like a middle finger, especially when I put that dark blue back here. Um, you'll be able to see that that looks like somebody giving you the middle finger right there. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be like a long term project. And that's what I intended for this to be. Um, I didn't want it to be a blanket because I wanted it to be portable. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, I just I don't enjoy making these granny squares. Um, so the goal was to I would have liked to have gotten four rows from each color. Um, that would have been nice. Um, but I'm not, I can only get two and I have some left over. And honestly, I'm probably just going to toss this because I'm, I'm not keeping these scraps of yarn. I'm just not. Um, so if I had made it a little bit, I mean, I, I would have had to make it very, very long to have used up all the yarn in two rows. So either I would have had to make this very long blanket, which would have been a drag to make. So I, I didn't want, that was not an option. Or I would have had to have made, made it shorter, which, which wasn't an option either because then it's not really functional, right? I at least want it to be functional, right? I want it to, I want to be able to put it over me. And so if I, if I would have made it shorter to where I could got all the rows, it probably would have been like here and, you know, quite not, not quite as functional. I'm not a child. I don't have a little person body. Um, I have a big body. And so I need a big blanket. So, um, and I've been experimenting with, um, not doing, um, with not chaining to start my rows because I wanted my rows to look a bit more even. But I guess in this stitch, it really doesn't matter because it's such a holy stitch anyway. At least it is the way I'm crocheting it. Um, I've seen people use tighter gauges and it'd be less holy. Um, <laughs> but this is what this is what mine is looking like. <laughs> um, I just realized that mine is more holy than the examples that I've seen. <laughs> But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I did some foundation. I started it. I started it with a uh, foundation single crochet because I did not want to work these double crochets into this chain. I that did not um, appeal to me whatsoever. Um, I don't like working into long chains. I don't like working into long chains. Um, so I did the foundation single crochet, and um, my gauge has loosened up. I know I'm noticing that um, in the second two rows, my gauge was a lot looser than it was in the first two rows, but I don't really care. This is just for me. Um, and I've made I've been working on my uh, leader and ender project as I've been sewing. No need to show you those blocks. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. That's that's it. That's everything. That's everything. So like if I had stuck to one thing then I would have finished some things, but instead I just kind of, I just kind of spread it around. Um, I've been, in, I've been having fun with that. It's been keeping everything <clears throat> like just really fresh um, because I'm always doing something different and I'm kind of liking that right now. Um, I know it's not realistic long-term. I do need to just like settle in and finish something, but for now, um, for now I'm liking this. I know that summer's coming and when summer comes, things slow down for me crafting wise. I think that's why um, I've gotten back into crochet also because um, once June rolls around, we start going into party mode and everything is about prepping for the party and 
Then after the 4th of July, everything is about cleaning up from the party and recovering from the party. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, um, I don't get to, I don't get to sew as much during that time. I, I sew the least during the summer, but I kind of like having a crochet project that I can bring to bed because I can't bring my sewing machine to bed and I don't want to hand sew. I don't want to sew on a binding. I have no interest in it. I don't want to um, applique. I don't want an English paper piece. I do have my embroidery and so that is an option also. So uh, when I want something portable, like completely portable, I can bring the embroidery. Um, or if I want to be in bed doing something and I don't want to um, crochet, I can do that. But I do like the idea of keeping my hands busy at night. So, um, and some days I don't even touch anything. And some days I just do 15 minutes. I just like the option. That's how I've been working on the collar. I'm still working on the collar for my cardigan. Um, <laughs> I have to do four rows of 22, four rows of 21, four rows of 20, four rows of 19, four rows of 18, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until I get down to like 11. So that, that gives you how much more I have to do. It's not, it's not a lot. And honestly, if I had spent my time doing that instead of working on this, I'd be done with it. I'd be done with the collar, but this was way more fun. So, um, yeah. I think that's about it. Yeah, that's it. That's it, guys. Um, that is it for me. And I'll see you guys next video.